on, Sid. It's not like you to be so stuffy. Well, it's just that I don't think it's us, that's all. We're not Charles and Di, after all said and done. No, but it'll be something for us to treasure when we grow old. I'm gonna feel funny enough in that church without someone following me around with a camera. There has got to be a photographer. I am not getting weighed without a photographer. Okay, so there'll be a photographer. But don't forget it's sort of a sacrament. The vicar said not a media event. It was the vicar who first mentioned it. Uh, uh, morning, Roy. Morning. Try and talk some sense into him. Oh, well, at this time in the morning. What about, anyway? A video recording of the wedding. Oh, well, well why not? I'm shelling out enough as it is. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. Well, it's not that expensive. Cheers. I know a bloke who doesn't. There you are. Church, reception, the lot. I'll give you his number. Thanks, Roy. Oh, but come soon, Flip. I'm really got it written down somewhere. Morning. Right. Good morning, dear. Hello, yeah. What have I got written down? Nothing. Come on, I heard you. Oh, it's just a phone number, that's all. I'm doing you a poached egg, Anne-Marie. Who's phone number? Nobody ever got fat on a poached egg. You couldn't. She's not fat. <laughs> I'm getting as big as a house. Come on, you. Whose phone number were you on about? No, it's just a chap who does the videos, you know. For the wedding. Excuse me. I've forgotten something. There you go. Have you got a minute, Mrs Chance? If it's about next week's rosters, I'm afraid I haven't. Oh, no. No, I don't bother about rosters. Yes, I've noticed that, Mrs. Dardybick, and I really think you should. Well, this is a slightly delicate matter. Is it? Yeah. Diane, Mrs. Hunter. Oh. Well, her things. I heard Benny say you were taking them down to a charity shop. That's right. Well, I'm not too late, then. Oh, well, uh, do you want some things taken down? No, no. I was just wondering if I might have a little look first, you know, as a colleague. Oh. Well, we all know what happens in them places, don't we? I do mean, anything that's any good, it never even gets into the window. They keep it for themselves, ducks, didn't you know? I think that's most unfair and what's more, completely untrue. Oh, no, it's true. Only it's human nature. You can't do anything about it. I'm not saying they don't pay, same as the rest of us, but we all know gets first refusal, don't we? And I'm quite sure Diane would rather her things went to a friend. I mean, that camel coat for a start. Oh, unless you'd rather have it. I've often thought you'd look nice in camel. No, I don't want her camel coat, and I'm going to take everything down to the charity shop this afternoon. Oh. Well, suppose I come over to your place at lunchtime, then? Oh, well, I suppose if you're prepared to make a donation to the charity and, well, it's something you really want. 12.30, then. 12.30, all right. What did Helen Shapiro want? Only to pick her way through dice things like an old crow. <laughs> Look, when she's finished her looting, how about lunch out? Oh, that'd be wonderful. I'll pick you up about one. Mm. Oh, I'll be at chimneys. Well, that's all right. I'll pick you up at chimneys. OK. Oh, I just think it's a little too early, that's all. I've been here nearly three months, getting title to a boy, is it? Yeah. I was thinking of putting one for myself if I'd anyone school went with. Anybody seen Benny? There was a friend the like when I saw him. Look, I've got two guests out here and a pile of luggage. Oh, don't worry, I'll see. I don't know what's the matter with him. Poor beggar, he may as well stay at home for all the good he is here. He said some really weird things to sit the other night. Well, it sometimes affects them that way, you know, when they're not quite a full shilling. Uh, he brought a little pixie thing home from Diane's. And he could have had Enos in a house. That was all he wanted. Poor lamb. Hello, hello, hello. Who's been sending you red roses? It's for the St. George's Day dinner. Don't know why we're bothering. Beef willing tongue. Bit of a departure for you, innit? I let myself get talked into it. Jill and Adam about. No, I think they've gone out. Oh, I'll pop into the office then. Do a bit of business. Those things with you anyway. Fine. Apart from the fact that everyone's trying to sign me out. Sound you out? They want to know what's going on. They seem to think I'm in the know. And what have you been telling them? I haven't told them anything. I don't know anything, do I? Good. You used to consult me at one time. This is different. Well, what's different about it? In this case, I have to confer with Jill and Adam first. Oh, thanks. That's really put me in my place. Why, 
are you in such a paddy? Boyfriend trouble? That Daniel been messing you about? I am not in a paddy. Or is it Charles now? I sometimes lose track. It isn't boyfriend trouble. I just want to know what's going on. Oh, look at that. She's never even used them. Best Lancashire cotton, and she's never even used them. Oh, I think she got those in the sale at um, Christmas at Leamington. Oh, it just shows you, doesn't it? Shows you what? What an uncertain world we live in. Mm. Do you mind if I try the coconut? Oh, no, please do. Mm. It's a bit sort of fussy, isn't it? Still, you can get away with that when, you, when you're young. Uh, Mrs. Toddy Big, I don't want to hurry you, but... Uh... Well, what do you think? I don't know. No, I'm not sure myself. You know, I don't think this entirely was a good idea. Hello. Right, you ready? Almost. Now, Mrs. Toddy Big, how are you doing? Finished in a tip. Right. Might have been going through my things and then had an accident at the bottom of the hill. Oh, Adam, don't. That was some clown in a three-wheeler. Oh, I'll bet that was my Ron. Ah. Oh. When he failed his test for the third time, I said to him, Ron, why don't you try a three-wheeler just till your confidence comes back? It's a different license, you see. That explained a lot. Only it never did come back. Is he outside now? He's pursuing me up the hill like some sort of geriatric hell's angel. I hope you don't mind me coming here like this. Me? Of course I don't mind. I mean, I said you could come. It's just that, um, well, we do have to go out. No, uh, I can see you're upset. It was thoughtless of you. No, no, not at all, Mrs. Tardybrick. Oh, all right, I'll try the shoes on. <clears throat> oh, it's a nice house, this, isn't it? I like the sofa. Yeah, look, Mrs. Tardybrick, why don't you take the shoes with you, huh? Oh, didn't she have small feet? Funny, really. And her being so tall. No, she wasn't tall at all. You're probably thinking of some other corpse you've been robbing. Adam, for heaven's sake. I'm sorry, love. It's just my sense of humour, Mrs. Dardybig. Look, now, what is it? It's the shoes, uh, the coat, and... Oh! <laughs> well, these are nice. If that's what you're thinking about me, I don't think I want them. Mm. Please take them, Mrs. Tardybig. Look, your husband's waiting outside. Life has to go on, you know. Of course it does. Well, all right. But I'll give you a couple of quid for charity. What? For the sheets? Well, a fiver. I'll give you a fiver. Yeah, anything that you think is appropriate, Mrs. Tardybrick. There you go. Right you are. Then. Right. Come on. Mm. It's the third time I've had to do the front windows. I'm fed up with it. Well, when I saw you, I thought, aye, aye, he's been demoted, that Roy. Well, it's been his job, isn't it? He's got to walk about again. He's in a bit of a state, he is. Well, we can't all keep doing his job for him. Somebody's going to notice, aren't they? Should have heard him last night going on about how he brings bad luck to everyone. He says he's some sort of a jinx or other. <laughs> he's bringing more than his fair share around here at the moment. Yeah, Mrs. M was on too. She wanted to get him to the doctors this morning. He'll come round in his own time. I hope. I took her mind off it by talking about the wedding. Then she started on about the video. Did you ring that number I gave you? Yeah. 85 quid, that's daylight robbery. You won't get it any cheaper. That's just for the service. That doesn't include the reception. It's an expensive game, isn't it? I'm finding that out, mate. When I get married, this place is going to become a boom town. I reckon I'd still be paying for ours, if it had happened. Yeah, but you'd have finished up with Anne-Marie. Yeah. Well, best get off. Now then, you do me a favor. You put 85 quid on top of everything else and you won't notice it. I'll notice it, don't you worry. Look, said it. Mrs. Mitchell wants a video, you'll have one, whatever she says. Yeah, well, she keeps on and on and, and on. Until you give in, that's the way they work. Yeah, but 85 quid. Hmm. Think what you benefit from it. Yeah, a permanent reminder of something I want to forget. No, I mean in the short term. You get off your back, you bring a smile to her face, and you become the blue-eyed boy. It's a lot of money to pay for a little peace and quiet, though, isn't it? Well, it's an expensive commodity, Sid, for a married man. Yeah, well, I'll think about it. I'll give it some thought, but I think I'll shop around a bit. Whew. 85 quid. <laughs> yeah, yes, well, uh, could you get your son? Your bambino? Shall I pour it for you, sir? Ah, 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 uh, buenos dias. Um, a pussy blow, uh, Polly, um, uh, uh, with, um, Senora Freeman. Freeman. F for Freddy. Oh, for Romeo. <laughs> How you've heard of him, have you? Ah. Ah, bon. Uh, Senora Freeman, he's staying with you. Take cover. 
Chi well, perhaps they're in league, like Burke and Hare. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> Ron runs them over in the Robin, and Mrs. Tardybig buys up all the clothes. <laughs> You know, I was terrified that Mrs. Tardybig was going to take Guy's coat and then wear it for work. Lord knows what we'd have done with Benny then. I guess he's over the worst, isn't he? Yeah. I think we all are now. Well, it's a good sign when you can laugh at these things. Thanks for lunch. It's a real tonic. Well, I thought it might help mark the end of all this business. Hmm. I don't know what I'd have done without you, you know, these last few weeks. Well, Guy was my friend too, you know. And I've known her since... Before we were married. <laughs> yes. It wasn't just what you did for Di. You were there when I needed you. We'll always be able to work together, Jill. Whatever happens. Whatever happens. Well, you know how things are in this place. Well, that can't be right. It was Zane. He was on the phone to her this afternoon. He went to considerable trouble to track her down. Perhaps she's changed her mind. <laughs> you don't know Mrs. Freeman. She's a very determined lady. Well, don't underestimate Mr. Lancaster. He can be very persuasive. If anybody had told me three months ago that I'd still be here, I wouldn't have believed them. Me neither. What was that, Mrs. Tardybig? Well, I was beginning to wonder what I'd let myself in for. Well, you like your foot. No, it's these shoes. I'm breaking them in. If you ask me, the trouble with this place is there's too many chiefs. You can say that again. I've been working here nearly six months and I still haven't worked out what they all do. Well, it has been a bit unsettled, but all that will change. Yeah, apparently Mrs. Freeman's staying after all. Uh -huh. We can't be sure of that, Anne-Marie. <clears throat> and after all those things Mr. Lancaster was saying about her in the office. What things? Well, I wouldn't like to repeat them, but her ears must have been burning wherever she was. Since I've had a chance to talk to Mr. Lancaster, I have pointed out one or two things about Mrs. Freeman. So? You think she'll stay then? Well, I hope she does. She's been very good to me. Well, this is a bit early to make predictions. Let us just say that I have every confidence in Mr. Lancaster's judgment. How goes it? Ah, I still have my doubts about all this. Oh, I'm sure it'll be a glittering success. <laughs> Must be a bit difficult for you here sometimes. There's nothing I can't handle. Well, I have no doubt about that. No, I meant having a foot in both camps as it were. Oh? Well, the day-to-day -day running of this place on the one hand and the big picture from your father on the other. Oh, my father doesn't include me in his plans. Really? I thought he kept you very well informed. Everyone seems to think that, but it's not true. You do surprise me. I should have been a boy, really. Surely not. That's what he wanted, you see. A son to take over his business empire. Well, he's got the next best thing. You're competent, professional. Tough when needed to be. Tough? I'm sure your father is planning quite a role for you in this place. Adam? Yes? If it's information you're after, you'd be better off asking the chef. Chef? Oh, Darby. He seems to have my father's ear at the moment. Here's Darby. Mmm, oh. Busy? No, no, we're just kicking a few ideas around. Waiting for a phone call, actually. Ah, shall I, um... Join me! Oh, thank you. I'm hoping to have the answers to some of your questions by close of play. All this messing about does make life difficult. Well, not just for us. I mean, you must have wondered what hit you when you bought the place. <laughs> Once or twice, I must admit. But I'm still confident about his future. Cheers. Cheers! With the right person at the top. That's the problem with our business. Getting the staff. Well, it applies to all levels. Mm. Just when I thought things were going nicely, Nicola decides she wants out. <laughs> well, that's women for you. You never know where you are. Certainly like to keep us guessing, eh? I know we've come a long way since Victorian times. Well, well you might have. <laughs> but personally, I've always been suspicious of career women. You and me both, Adam. You and me both. 
Always seems to be a conflict between the head and the heart. And we all know what happens here, now. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought that Nicola, of all people, would have thrown in the towel over a silly affair? They just don't seem able to divide their lives into compartments. Work and private life. Still, at the end of the day, where would we all be without them, eh, Adam? Where indeed? <laughs> Again, we need scrabble, Johnny Bass. <laughs> what are you saying, Mr. Cheerful about? I'd just been to see a man about a video. Oh, Sid, you haven't, have you? Yeah, fixed it all. Wedding, reception, everything. Oh, Sid, you spoil me. Well. Was it that chap Roy mentioned? Uh, no, not him, no. Who then? A friend of a friend. What friend? Not Ray Grice? No, not Ray Grice. He knows Ray Grice. His name is Vic Dubold. Sidney, I don't want that man having anything to do with our wedding. You don't even know him. Vic Dubold? I know enough about him to write a book. Oh, yeah, maybe. What Margaret's told you. Well, you ask her. Ask her about the pressure cooker Vic got for them. Pressure cooker? Yes, the exact same ones were on Police 5 the next night. That didn't prove anything, Ivy. She jumped out of her skin every time the doorbell rang for weeks afterwards. He is legit. Take it from me. I bet he's doing it on the cheap and all. He's not. I'm paying him cash, but, I mean, uh, he's the one that does the jobs for the snooker club when uh, they go to real. Oh, really? There's a lot of work for him. Mm. They say he's a master with a camera. Yes. I'm sorry to keep you. I know it's late. That's all right. Jill, Adam, I've asked Mr. Darby along so that he can pass information on to the staff, uh, put an end to all these rumors. Absolutely. Now, as you know, about a month ago, Nicola told me she intended to leave Crossroads. My first instinct was to try and get her to stay. But I've changed my mind. I've had a word with her this afternoon and I've told her not to bother working out her notice. So she's not coming back? Only to pack her bags. I've got to have people around me who are reliable. People I can trust. You all right, Darby? Yes, ma'am, fine. So what happens now? What happens now, Adam, is a complete reorganization of the whole caboodle. I'm going to transform this place, and I'm going to start right at the top, right here in this office. You've been visiting the Crossroads Motel here on UK Gold. Next stop, Dynasty.